Hey there everyone, something fishy going on at the Royal Society today. I'm joined by John Bushell from the archives and he's going to show us some awesome stuff to do with some sort of ocean research. You're going to take us to the Seychelles? That's the plan, yeah. So the Royal Society had a research station in the Seychelles from the 1960s, I believe? Yes, so the Society essentially took over the Aldabra Coral Atoll, so it's like a sort of at the time was part of the British Indian Ocean Territory, now it's part of the Seychelles. And in the 1960s, the British government kind of flagged this up as an ideal site for development for an RAF airbase. And there's a huge scientific kind of backlash against this, understandably, because you've got a coral atoll here that, at least on the surface, is very much undisturbed by human interaction, and there's a huge wealth of kind of undiscovered knowledge here for the scientists to look at. So when the society wins that argument in the sort of late 1960s, they set up a research team who initially head out there in 1967 and were there until sort of 1979 when the Seychelles take over the base and continue operating it to this day. So it's a, it's a huge endeavor um, and it generates a lot of really interesting science about coral reefs and coral atolls and the sort of flora and fauna that you find there. Well, we're not gonna talk about the modern science, as important as that is. Obviously, we're gonna talk about some of the old science that was being done because you have dug up a few objects here that date back to those early days of research at Aldabra. Yes, so most of this is sort of mid 1970s when these were kind of collected. So one of the researchers from the atoll donated much of his collection to the, to the society archives recently and we've got some additional stuff that is also it's been part of the society's collections since you know the 1960s 1970s when we were operating the station itself i have to start with this am i allowed to touch this yeah if you've got your gloves on that's absolutely fine i'm guessing that's a shark it is a shark jaw so one of the things they were studying was marine life out there which inevitably requires collecting specimens. So we've actually got two examples of these. These are jaws from white tip sharks. Both of them line caught, so they would have gone out in one of their kind of fishing boats, and I think it took them several hours to land one of these things. So, you know, if, if that's your jaw, you can imagine the kind of whole species is maybe sort of a good couple of meters long. In the 1970s, they were in vast numbers. They were probably one of the most abundant sort of shark species you'd have found in those waters. You know, critically endangered today, like many other shark species, just because of, you know, overfishing. At the other end of the spectrum, what have we got here? This is a sort of mummified seahorse. Our researcher picked up this along with a bunch of other little samples while he was sort of investigating one of the sort of lagoon areas essentially, so sort of along the kind of coastline. The whole animal has just kind of dried out and mummified in, in the sun. Now, what on earth is this? This is a ray tail. So this particular one I believe is a porcupine ray you can probably guess why, because the whole thing is covered in sort of sharp spines. Now, this is the smallest giant tortoise I've ever encountered. <laughs> the Aldabra Coral Atoll has got one of the largest populations of giant tortoises in the world. This particular chap never made it much beyond hatching by the look of it. So this is a juvenile. The researchers will have found it and taking it back to the research station as a, as a sort of sample. We haven't got a mummified adult here, <laughs> but to give you an idea of the size, along with all the photos we've been showing you, we do have this in the collection as well. What have we got? Yes, yeah, so this is a, a dorsal scute from an, an adult. So it's one of the plates from the top of the shell. So you can see there's a missing sort of disc here. This would have been like a titanium disc with a probably unique number stamped on it, which would have been the marking for the, the, the particular tortoise. So they could have kept track of where they were moving around the island and sort of where the different sort of groups were kind of congregating and which tortoises belonged to which groups as they're doing all their research. So a huge, you know, amount of their time was spent capturing tortoises, weighing tortoises and then adding discs onto them and then keeping track of them as, as time went on. Now throughout this video we've been showing you a few photos on screen as well that were taken during this research. And those pictures come from these collections here. These are basically just photo albums and other treasures. The Society had a sort of dedicated expeditions office based here and at Carlton House Terrace. Part of their role was obviously publicising the science that the teams out there were doing. So they were quite keen to collect, you know, photography and other kind of visual material that they could then pass along to newspapers, journalists, to sort of really kind of sell and just visualise the kind of science. For example, we've got a map here, of course. We always like a good map here on objectivity. They've just got that lovely sort of 60s and 70s feel to them, don't they, these pictures? I mean, you know, they've survived remarkably well, apart from, as you can see, the glue falling off the, some of <laughs> yeah. the uh, pages. There's a little baby. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's looking slightly larger than our, than our little, juvenile, than our I suspect. Juvenile. Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's made he's, it past yeah, the danger he's, zone. He's probably made it to, uh, to a safe level. But it just gives you an idea of just how many of them there were out there. Oh, not safe for work. <laughs> 
some of the workers and some of the locals by the looks of it? Yeah, so in addition to the sort of Royal Society sending out their own scientists, there was a group of uh, sort of islanders from the Seychelles who were based there full time supporting the research, doing, you know, data gathering and sort of information gathering activities that the, the scientists team out there were doing as well. You know, it really is like a kind of collaborative project. You see in this white square here, this is where the research station was located, presumably still is located. Uh, yes, I think that I don't think the site's changed all that much. The buildings are almost certainly have been rebuilt a few dozen times over and they're brand spanking new these days, but I think the site is more or less in the same spot. I mean, you're based here in London, John. Do you wish you were out in the Seychelles doing this kind of on-the-ground research or you're happier here in the archive? You know, I wouldn't say no if they said you want to go out there, you know, just, you know, now and again, just to make sure uh, everything's kind of ticking along nicely. I'll have a word with Keith and see what we can arrange. <laughs> We've kept people in suspense for a while. Keith, what's in the box? Well, this is Yong's microscope. Oh yeah, now that is what a microscope is supposed to look like. Standard field instrument for the period. Okay. You've got some little lenses there. So the manufacturing company, you can see just on, the, on here, it's Hawksley. I believe they're still making microscopes actually. They've been doing it since the 19th century. So it's one of the long established uh, instrument making companies. 